My name is Jerry Bond, and I represent Being In Ministry, a worldwide TV ministry that is going to bless you today. May the glory and the presence of God our Father through Jesus His Son by the Spirit that envelops and holds and is in us go all over this world. And may the people see and know that God is alive, that He is dealing with His people. He's bringing salvation, redemption, and repentance to His people to restore them to a right relation. May the glory of the fire that's in the river flow upon you. May the river of life that is in Christ Jesus flow into us because in Him we can do all things and all things are about Him. We must come to a place where we realize that the ministry is all about Jesus and Jesus is everything. May this bless you today. May you see the glory of the Lord. May you be in, uh, just His presence will overshadow you and we give you all praise and all things in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We're so glad y'all are here, and what a beautiful day it is, and let's be excited in the Lord, and let's pray. Father, we worship you. We praise you. Let our, the fruit of our lips continually offer up thanksgiving to you for who you are. You're so mighty. You're so wonderful. You're so good to us. With long life, you shall satisfy us. We thank you, Father, just like Brother Wesley there. Father, we just give you praise for the strength of our bodies, the strength of our mind, the wonderment of our heart. And knowing, and knowing that we can enter into your presence, enter into the promise of the Spirit of the living God 24-7 because you're always with us and around us, causing us to walk with you all the time in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let your Bible turn with me to the Galatians, the third chapter. And let's look at a couple of verses and then we're going to go to John, the 14th chapter. Now, I've changed the title of this two or three times, and I think I've got it right if the Spirit of God's given it to me. Let's read it, and then I'll give you the title, and you'll see it yourself. Verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. It is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive or enter into the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now go with me over to John, the 14th chapter, and look at verse 16. It says, I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he will be with you forever, comma, that of the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not behold him or know him. But you know him, because he lives in you, and abides in you, and will be with you, and in you constantly. Never leaves you. Never leaves you. So we're going to talk about entering into the presence of the promise. Now this was given approximately 430 years to Abraham before the law was given to Moses. So when you set the details in, in God wanted in Genesis and all the way through the covenant life of, of the old covenant and the new, the promise of the Spirit was to be given, which means Christ in you, the anointed one in you and in me and anyone that will receive it by faith. Now Jesus came preaching. He was the seed of Abraham. The only seed. If you study this out in Galatians chapter 3, you're, he didn't give it to every seed, but he gave it to his seed. The seed of Abraham, which is Christ Jesus in us. So when we began to walk in the anointing, we began to enter into his presence of the promise. The promise was that, was that the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit would be given to all flesh. Now in Joel, approximately 800 years B.C. before Jesus was born, and if you read down through there, let's just turn there just for a moment. You, you might get a, a real bang out of what he's saying there in Joel. Look at Joel chapter 2 and start in verse 23. It says, Rejoice, O sons of Zion. That's us. Be glad in the Lord your God, for he has given you the early rain for your, your redemption. He has poured down upon you the rain, the early, the latter rain is before, and the threshing floor, that's our heart, with the fruit of grain, the, the vats, in other words, we're going to be overflowing with new wine and new oil, which is the Holy Spirit. Then he says, I will make up to you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the creeping locust, the stripping locust, the gnawing locust. In other words, everything that the enemy has been doing in your life and your children, he said, I'm going to bring that back and I'm going to restore that to you. Now, if you go back to Genesis, you're going to find there were seven years of lean and seven years of blessing, seven years of abundance. 
We've just finished the drought. The drought is broken and the Spirit of God has given us the rain upon the land and the rain upon us. So the, the awakening, the great awakening, the spiritual awakening that is happening in us is begun. It is long begun because Christ said, Jesus said that in us, the Spirit of God would be poured out. On the day of Pentecost, which last Sunday was Pentecost, Paul, Peter got up and preached on, in Acts chapter 2 that the Holy Spirit came upon all those and they were saved and a great awakening happened. All right, if you go to Acts 3 and Acts 4, you're going to find that there was a guy sitting at the gate and a great another awakening poured out. So every time God is ready to do something, there's going to be a real eye-opening or awakening what's going on. Now many of us, and I'm going to go back to Joel in just a minute, you're going to find many of us are looking at the symptoms and not at the answer. So what is the symptoms we're looking at? We're looking at people falling away from God. We're looking at sin everywhere abounding. And you name the sin, it's, it's happening. We're looking at how miserable and how evil that we are as a society, how we don't know right from wrong, righteousness from unrighteousness, and no one is willing to really stand up and say, look, Take your eyes off of the problem. Take your eyes off of the things that's happening and place your thoughts in the intents of your heart. I had a man come to me this morning. He was a, a Navy SEAL. He had, uh, after he was out of the service, they, they or right at the end of his service life, they uh, court-martialed him for killing a, a person, a woman, with a grenade fixing to blow up a bunch of Marines in Afghanistan. Now, is that really? Can you understand what there is there? How evil breeds evil but let me tell you something when you don't look at the situation look at the answer let's go back to Joel he says my great army which I've sent amongst you will have you will have plenty to eat you will be satisfied you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wonderfully with you and your people will never be put to shame and you will know that I am in the midst of you and I'm the Lord your God and there is no other and my people should never forget and here's what he said I will pour out upon this, upon you, my spirit, so that all mankind, in the 28th verse, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will have visions, male and female. I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will remember your, it, dis, uh, let me go 30. He says, I will display wonders in the sky and the earth. Well, this is the blood moons. We're seeing those. We're seeing the blood and fire and columns of smoke. This, and we're also seeing volcanoes erupt. We're seeing those things. He says the sun will be turned into darkness. We've seen that this year before the moon into blood and the great and awesome day of the Lord comes and will come about that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. So he said that and then on the day of Pentecost when Jesus came out of that tomb 50 days later the Spirit of God was poured out. Now we're talking about entering into the promise of the Spirit. Entering into God's presence. We're talking about how do you do this. Well Jesus over and over in, in the book of John. Now you can't find this much in the other three gospels but in the book of john it's a love story between our savior and each and every one of us jesus wants to enter into that covenant relationship that he made by the shedding of his blood at cross of calvary and went into the bowels of the earth three days and three nights and through that mighty resurrection he said i have the power to lay down my life i have the power to raise my life up you're going to see me restore this temple in three days he also says, I'm going to give you, because I am the first of the firstborn, I am going to give you that resurrection power that when you die, you're going to be raised up and you're going to have a new body. You're going to be a new person. You're going to be a new creation. You're going to do that here on earth. And then when you lay down your last breath, you're going to also have a new body which will enter the kingdom of heaven because this one will not because flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Amen, somebody. Are y'all fired up as I'm fired up this morning? The Spirit of the living God is moving across the face of the deep, across our hearts, across the pathway that you're in. Don't look at the problem. Look at the answer. Get your eyes focused on Jesus. Forget the past. You can't put the water back up the creek, and we're not drinking down herd from the herd. We're drinking upstream from the herd, and the water is pure, and it's good. Come on in. Walk as far out in, and then if when you can't touch the bottom, you know you're in the presence of a living God in your heart and around you. Do not listen to the tales that you hear on the TV. Listen to what the Spirit of God is telling to your heart, your personality, to you. God speaks through 
through his word. He speaks through others. He'll, he will send anybody and somebody to get you when you're eyeball deep in the gator pit. He will have a comforter come to you and he will lift you up and he'll restore you and he'll make things right for you. But what he desires, he is so jealous of us. He desires us like a bride and her husband. She desires her husband and she is very jealous of him. The father is so jealous of us that he wants us to enter into that presence 24-7. So when you're dry as a country whirlwind, stop and say, Lord, where are you? And begin to stir the embers up, stir the coals of redemption, stir the coals of praise, stir the offerings of gladness. Let the, let the halo of the world leave you and let the halo of love, joy, and peace, and kindness, and long suffering enter into you and let the presence of a living God just multiply through you. May the Lord just open your heart this morning to love. When you just go to loving people and hugging them, and as Terry says, give them a big old squeeze and a hug and a kiss and whatever else you may need to do, you're doing this because the Spirit of God has said, come on, I am here. I am wanting to comfort you. I'm wanting to guide you. I'm wanting to teach you. I'm wanting to show you my own self. I want to expose myself or declare my thoughts and intents of my hearts into you so that you can walk before me holy as I am holy. So you say, it's not of my righteousness. It's of His righteousness. It's not of my sanctification. It's because He has done that. It's because of His holiness operating in you and I that we walk in that lifestyle that He would have us. So we as a, as a person, we must make the decision. This is how you enter in. You have to be willing to say, okay, I'm laying down the thoughts and the intents of my heart today. I want to enter into the promise of the Spirit. I want to receive that. And Jesus says in Luke eleven thirteen, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, it says, how much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit that asks? So we enter into the presence of the Lord. We enter into the promise of the Lord. We enter into the thoughts of the Lord. They are ours by faith. By faith you receive them. What happens when faith comes, you begin to express what is in your heart comes out of your mouth. So when you express what is in there, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I have forgotten the old. I have been brought into the new. I am a new person. I am a new creation. The presence of the living God, the comforter is on me, in me, around me, through me, and fulfilling the things of God in me. Time out. Interesting. Interesting how the presence, the presence. I was thinking this morning is, I said, Lord, I've changed the name of this title of this sermon a half a dozen times. What is the correct title? He said, I just want the people to know me. I want the people to understand me. I have done everything possible to cause the, the folks to understand who I am and what I want to do in these last days. I want to pour myself out on all flesh, not just one or two or on the select few, but on all. All are my children. All have been brought out. All have been set free. There is none that I have not wanting to bring free. I, everyone. He says, well, what about your will? You hear people talking about your will. Your will, when you, if you understand something, God is in absolute control. He, you may not understand this, but if you'll think about it, God is in absolute control. The things that are happening is because they are allowed to happen. The people in power are, are there because he allowed them to be there. To show you how vile and how wicked and how awful that man is. Because man does not know what he is doing. He is walking without the presence of the God of a holy God. When you deny Him, you are without Him. When you deny the presence of the Spirit, you have no way of knowing whether right or wrong. Without the Spirit, you have no life because it is the Spirit of God that gives life. Not the Spirit of Satan, but the Spirit of God. Life leaves you when you walk in the things of the world. Life leaves you when you enter into the things of, of the, uh, the Antichrist. Life leaves you when you enter into sin. Life leaves you when you take your mind and say, I'm going this way or that way. Your will has very little to do with it. Your volition has very little to do with it. You can will yourself to live. You can will yourself to die. You can will yourself to sin. You can do those things. But God is ever drawing you and bringing you and causing you to walk in His presence. Amen? So when you realize that your steps are ordered by God, you say, well, I'm a nobody and going nowhere. No, you're a child of the Most High God. Change your attitude who, who you are by the humility that He puts in you. When you are filled with the presence of the Spirit of God, you're walking in kindness, you're walking in love, you're walking in joy, you're walking in, in His presence, and you will not do, say, or be anything that will take you out of His presence. You're, 
You are desiring his presence. You're hungering and thirsting for him. You're thirsting and hungering for just to be in his presence. You just got to have it. You can, you're not satisfied with it, anything else that doesn't build your spirit person up. The real you, the who is in you. That if you're sitting there looking at who you think you might be, that's the wrong thing. Look who he is in you, and then you will have the right attitude. You will have a spirit of humility. You will have a spirit of rejoicing. I can do all things through the anointing that strengthens me. I can pray for people, and God will heal them. I can do these things because the Spirit of God says. I was reading this book, The God of All Comfort. What is wonderful about this, The God of All Comfort, when you really get to a place, it's not what you think, it's what the Word of God says about what you think. There's a difference. Think about what the Word of God says. The Word of God says, Christ, the anointing, shall flow through you, out of you, for you, and in you. The Spirit of God in you, bringing forth the things of God on this earth at this time. You are a vessel unto righteousness. You are a vessel to lay hands on the sick. You are a vessel to believe God for the healing of that person. You are the vessel to stand in faith because He has given you the power to overcome the world because we're more than conquerors in Christ who lives in us. Amen? So we began to walk in the power. We began to say the words of God. His words are stronger and greater than ours because they were created in a greater atmosphere and a greater attitude than mine and your attitude. His way is greater than ours. Some people will say, well, what about my will and my volition? I'm telling you from the day you, before you were ever born in Jeremiah 1, 6, the spirit of the living God was in you and in your mama's womb before you were ever became a little piece of protoplasm. You are and are what God has created in your mother's womb by your, husband, your father and your mother coming together in one. God doesn't want us to join up with a whore. He wants us to join up with the spirit of the living God and not be in whoredom, not be going after these things. You're going to say, well, my will. Your will has very little to do with it because the Bible says in Psalm 34 that the steps of a righteous man or woman is ordered by God. So you're walking in front of you as the Spirit of God leading you, calling you, coaxing you, moving you, comforting you, doing whatever needs to be done in you to bring you to the presence of God. You say, well, I'm a nobody going nowhere. No, you're a child of the Most High God going where God has called you to go into the darkest places or the greatest places. It doesn't matter. Man's eyes is on the wrong thing. Man's eyes is looking at the things that are around you and I, which really are, are here but for a moment. Everything that you're looking at is but for a moment, but the things of God are eternal and they are forever. Don't look at the things that are very close to you. Look at the things that the Father's looking at. Allow the Spirit of God to change you. Forget all the bad and sorry things that you think you've done or could have done or wanted to do. Forget that. I was with some people yesterday and they were talking about that second look at a beautiful woman. Well, it's not the first look that gets you in trouble. It's that second look when you begin to lust after her or lust after that car or lust after that ten bucks or steal or do or lie. All those things Satan is trying to get you out of God's perfect will. We are not in our own will. We're not in our own bailiwick. You'll hear people say, well, I had a couple call and they says, uh, this guy's wife was leaving for another man. I said, do you want her back? And he says, yes, I don't want her to leave. I said, if you'll stay in faith, she will be back. But you've got to be willing to forgive her. Hosea went and got the, his wife seven times. How many of us are willing to go and reestablish a relationship with somebody that's done us wrong? Now, if you get to turning the music on on the radio, you'll say, poor old me and why is me? Or let me have 15 beers so I can get to where I am. So we began to look and feel sorry for ourselves and think about all the worthless things we are, and we will start confessing it. I told this man this morning, I said, forget what they've done to you. Forget all that hard stuff. Look where you are now and look what you're going to do and look where you're going and who you're going to be with and what you're going to do when you get there. Do you think God heals you or causes you and I to be healed or delivered or raises us up to be, be born again? Do you think God causes that to happen because of who we are? No, it's because of who Jesus is. Because Jesus lives in us by the Spirit of the living God. Amen? Now we all desire the flesh. We live in the flesh. We operate in the flesh. Well, this body feels good, feels bad, or whatever thing. No, you have the power oh, in Jesus' name and the power of the, of the Word of God to take authority over your body, over everything that's happening in you, everything around you, for God's glory. Not for your glory, but for His glory. When you do that and you begin to give Him the praise and the admonition that He so well deserves because He is the Father. He created us to be in His image, to be like Him. We are not created to be dogs wallowing around in our sorrow and in our vomit. We're not created as pigs walking 
walking around in the walla. We're created in the newness of life to walk in greater things and seated in heavenly places with the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you're going to have to listen to the tape to get that because that's wonderful. That comes right out of the heart of the Spirit of the living God in the presence of God for all of us this morning. We are walking under the anatomy mission and the anointing of the Word upon flesh. The Word created. The Word created. God said and the Word created. God said and the Word created. We're made in His image. We speak. We create. We say. We do. We are because He is and He... Oh, I hope you all are getting this. Dear Lord, it's a, it's, a, it's a marvelous what the Spirit of God is saying and how He unfolds the truth of things. If you read John 14 and 15 and 16, you're going to find that the Spirit of God is moving and hovering over your heart, your being, your presence, wanting to move you and motivate you and bring you and cause you to walk in the power and the admonition that He has for you. Walking in the wonderment and the goodness and the wow. The wow, that's a wow. That person got healed. That's a wow. That's glory. Thank you, Father. Jesus, oh, we love you. But what do we do? Oh, me. Oh, me. I don't feel good. I don't have any money. We cry. We... Go to Psalm 107. They cried out in all their troubles. And he sent his word and healed them all. Not just one. He healed them all. He wants you and I to walk in the power and the presence 24-7. Sometimes the presence of the Spirit of God will get on you or me. And we can't stand. We fall down. Sometimes we laugh at the devil. Sometimes we laugh at ourselves. Holy laughter. Why? Because there's restoration. There's wonder. But can you understand that? How God took from the finger to the little to thumb and created the whole universe in the span of his hand? Can you understand how he spoke to all the creation of all the animals, all the bugs, all everything, all the plants? He spoke it into being. We have that same power. The wonderment of the Father the omniscience of who he is, the greatness of he is. And Jesus says, the Father and I are one, and you are in me, and I'm in him, so we're all one. In John 17, he says, Father, I've given out all the things you've given to me. Now we're one, and I pray that you'll keep these that you've given to me. So he's called us all to come into his presence, to walk in the power and the goodness and the mercy that he set before us, and to forgive all those unkind things that people do and say, and the harm and the hinderment. Don't, walk, don't look at that whether you say, well, there's a great falling away. Yes, it is prophesied in Thessalonians and other places that there would be a falling away. But our Father's heart is the Father. His heart is desiring His children to repent and return to Him. Just like the prodigal son. Don't leave me. I want you to come back and eat at my table. I want you to enjoy my presence by my Spirit. I want you to come and walk with me in the cool of the day. I want you to lay down that sin that easily entangles you, as it says in Hebrews 12. I want you to come and walk in my... Put on my royal robe that I've given you. Put on that signet ring on your finger. Know that you're my children and that I've called you out of that darkness. I've called you out of that poverty. I've called you out of that sin that is entangled. I've called you out of that attitude that's hurt you and caused you to walk in the dumbness and the darkness that's in you. I've called you and your husband, your family, your children all to come to me. All that are heavy laden. I will give you rest. I will take that yoke of burden off your neck. I will show you my mercy. I will show you my goodness. But you walk in it by expressing it how I love you, Father. I'm sorry I messed up. When we do that, that clears the way for the righteousness to come. It's the stubbornness of my heart and your heart that keeps us from having salvation. What is salvation? Everything it takes to be complete in Jesus. That's salvation. Not just eternal life. You know, I was taught that we must walk up to the gates of death every day and die every day. And one of these days when we finally take a last breath, we'll enter the kingdom of heaven. Hogwash. Jesus says, I've come that you have abundant life and have it more right now, and I want you to walk in it right today. I don't want you going over yonder or over there. Don't be looking over there. Don't be going over there. You can receive it wherever you are. There are people anointed to do all kinds of things and all kinds of prayer, but you can pray yourself. You are anointed by, by God's own decree that you are his child, and you can walk into power and the goodness and everything, all the gifts of the Spirit, all the fruit of the Spirit. And do not be afraid of the Holy Spirit. That's just God. When God's moving, that's just God. What do people do? They fall down. They get scared. They go, oh, oh what do we do? We see all these things happening. You've got to know that you know that you know that when you die, when you lay down and take that last breath, you're in the presence of Almighty God. But i got news for you. You're in His presence now. Every dumb thing you're doing right now, He knows about it. He's just waiting you to say, okay, 
I'm sorry, Father, I'm here. If you will stop doing what you're doing for one, one little short period of time and just sit and be still, you will see the presence of God. Look around you. Look at the hair on your head. Look at the beauty in your eyes. Maybe your heart is hard. What breaks up the hardness and the, the fallowness of our heart? You know, farmers lay out land. They let it grow fallow. It means there's nothing on it. Do you realize that at the end of a, a fallow period comes great harvest? Did you realize that we're in a jubilee year right now? We've just come out of a drought. At the end of seven years of drought, it's seven years of jubilee. Everything is restored, brought back to right state. See, and, you, and when you look around at the political statements, you can't see anything that says everything's going to be right. But I got news for you. God is going to have a great awakening, spiritual awakening. And the most unlikely candidates, me or you, is going to get to see the, and be in the presence of an almighty God doing great and wonderful things. I'm declaring this. I'm speaking it out. I sense it in my, spread, in my spirit. I see it in God's word that he is wanting, he is willing, and he's more than able to do it. Our God is able to do all things if we'll call upon his name. But he's also looking for somebody that has enough brass or kahunis or whatever you want to say, guts, to stand up and say, my God is able to change this nation to a godly nation and to stop the things that are troubling the hearts of the people and they will come back to the salvation of the Lord. They will turn from their sin. They will. If it takes another 9-11 or an atomic weapon or a million people to get killed from some viral infection that they send around like we had this leak with uh, anthrax some disease some kook somewhere decides they're going to kill everybody god will take that and make something good but i pray that america will have enough kahunis enough guts enough sense to stand up and say god is able we're going to walk in this and we bind that enemy that would try to kill our people because he doesn't want any to perish. He wants them all to come to salvation. And those people that are killing people like that are part of the Antichrist. And he's binding that. We have to pray. And all it takes is a man and his wife. A man and two people to speak and believe the word of God. To watch the word of God prevail. Because he said I'm looking for somebody that will do what I've sent them to do. And all it takes is one in person with somebody in agreement with them. And you're going to see it. And so you'll watch and see the power of God. When are you going to wake up and say, that's me? That's me. Well, I was a bad person. No, you're not a bad person. You're a good person. You've just been misguided. So when we enter into the promise of the Spirit, we have His presence 24-7. Now, I don't have a pocket knife in that pocket. I'm, so you're supposed to be holding your pocket knife. Might be an enemy lurking. You've got to stop for just a minute and take a breath and just think about where you are, what you've been doing, and who you've been doing it with. Sometimes we need to say, friend, neighbor, loved one, I'm going on with Jesus. Do you want to go with me? I want your presence. I want your presence. Sin will take you out of God's presence. It's, he's there. It doesn't, he doesn't leave you, but the, knowing his presence. There's a difference. Now some people think it's a warm fuzzies or you know the chill bumps up. And it could be. And it could be falling out on the floor. You know when they came to arrest Jesus when Judas Iscariot brought him up there with all the religious folks. And he said we're looking for Jesus the Nazarene. He went up and kissed him. And when he said I am he all those troops hit the dirt. Do you think they could have took him when all, they're all in the dirt groveling around down there? I tell you what would be also made when, he, when old Peter took his sword and cut Malachus's ear off and Jesus reached and picked the ear up and put it back on the side of his head. Is that a wow? Or is that a wow? That is our God. That is our Savior. That's who we are. We have the same power. He says, you are in me and I'm in you. Abiding in me. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do. I mean, get over it, folks. He says it we, in five other times. In John, John 15, 16, he says, I didn't, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Go and ask in my name and you can do these things. John 14, 13 and 14, he says, anything you want, you can do it in my name. Yeah, I'll do it for you. John 16, 23, he said, up till now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and it'll be given to you that your joy be full. How do, what makes you joyful? The joy of the Lord is your strength. When you see God healing people and delivering people and bringing people out of bondage and seating them in heavenly places, you get excited. That's joy. 
It's not sex on a Sunday morning laying back with a beer in your hand. That's, that is earthly joy. The difference is, is the Lord. The Lord in His presence. Now you may think you're in hog heaven. And you got a, a new Cadillac car and you got ten bucks in your pocket, pocket and you're driving down the road and you're whistling Dixie and everything is good. But I got news for you. You have no joy. You're not happy and you're discontented with the way of life you're living. And if you're doing drugs and trying to get high pharmaceuticals or off the street drugs, you're just fooling yourself because there is nothing will satisfy your heart or my heart except the presence of the word of the living God. That is the only thing that will satisfy you. You may be going off and you may think your kids are wonderful and you may want to go visit them and you may go do those things. But I got news for you. There's nothing on this earth short of the presence of the living God that will make you or bring you or draw you that makes you know that you know that you know that it is in Him eternally in you. Amen. So when you begin to walk in this, you'll see it. Okay, we're round, for, round two here. You know, there's, there's 15 rounds in this. I got news for Satan, you're knocked out. I was reading in the Word, and if you'll read it, you'll find out for yourself that the Lord Jesus shows up with the sword of the Spirit of His mouth and wipes Satan out and all the evil ones. Wipes them out. All the sickness and all the diseases have been wiped out. How? By the blood of Jesus. By the redemption that He brought. He gave us. He is all things to all people, all time. How do you get it from there to here? How with the heart you believe, with the mouth you confess, with the things and the thoughts and intents of your heart. When you begin to look at something through the narrowness and the shortness of your breath and your thoughts, you will look at it and you will be so finite of what you're looking at that you can't see around you. you can't, you're looking through that mirror very dimly. Very dimly. But take your handkerchief, a clean cloth, wipe that thing clean. Jesus, I repent. That wipes that... And you see through. And what do you see? You see the glory of God. You see the presence of God. You see the wonderment of His Word. You see the, the awesome of what He does and how He does it. You see who He is reacting in us so that we can be like Him. You say, well, you just want to be like Jesus. You got it. You are like Jesus because you're made in His exact image. Amen? So when you begin to walk in this, you begin to talk in this, you begin to experience this, then God changes you from with out from within. He brings it out of you. He puts it in there so it'll come out of you. If you sow yourself into whatever you're giving yourself to, that's what you become. A, a Olympic runner or swimmer or someone of decathlon, they sow themselves into that for years and years and years and years and they practice and they work out and they take their body up to that point of resistance and then they make that final leap and they go through that resistance. And that's us when we're trying to comp conquer the things of the Lord. We're trying to go into His presence. We come up to a place where we feel like we're deadlocked. We've experienced His presence but we haven't stepped fully into the, the power of praying in the Holy Spirit language. We haven't stepped over into the presence of the Lord because we are up to that place where resistance is coming against you. Satan don't want you to enter in. He's wanting you to step up and blow through that resistance and that wall will come just make the effort say Lord I'm for it I'm hungry I'm thirsty I want pure in heart I want you I got to desire you it's like a man to, or a woman or however they come together in, in holy love and they come together and they desire one another and they're not going to be satisfied with nothing less they're going to push through till they have that and they'll say thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you and your attitude totally changes the presence the presence and so you sit there by yourself and you're, you're hungry and you're thirsting and, and you're reading God's Word and, you, and you're so dry and you, you just can't sense His presence and, and you turn on praise music and it doesn't do anything for you and you begin to worship and it doesn't do anything and you say, Oh God, oh God, i got to have you. Forgive me. And the first thing you realize is He's there. He's filling that emptiness in your heart. He's changing those things that you've been backlogged in and bound up in. He's moving that out of you. And first thing you know, you become a new creation. You become a new person. You've been washed. You've been cleansed. You've been filled with His presence. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's power. And you say, oh, Father, I just worship you. I just praise you. I just thank you. The presence. We've never really experienced His presence. But when Jesus says, I am, and they were on the ground, groveling around, they couldn't get up. The power kept them down. They couldn't get up. 
You'll see people in some services, they just fall out on the floor and they can't get up. They have no power to move. Their bodies is just, in, 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 they're just there. They can't do anything. They don't know what to do. And the power of God is just restoring. This week on Tuesday night, about 2 or 3 in the morning, I was praying. I woke, well, I, I woke up, I couldn't sleep, and I got up and got a drink of water and climbed back in the rack. And I, and I was just laying there, and all of a sudden I went back to sleep, and I woke up and I was praying in the strangest language. I, I don't know what kind of language, but it was just flowing like a river. And out of, out of that came an interpretation. He says, be still. You're going to see my glory. Be still. You're going to see my my hand upon the face of the earth. Be still and watch. My glory is here. My awakening is happening right before you're at. not going to happen. It is happening. It's been happening. It is happening. And it's around those who are desiring and want to know my presence are entering into my courts with praise. They're entering into my presence with thanksgiving. They're entering in because they know who they are. They know by the word of God that they're entering into that. And then that sickness, that disease, that poverty or whatever is harming or hurting the ignorance that is upon them, that is gone to seed in their heart, is being plowed away in the foulness of their heart, and there's new life there. Because they've been sown into death, they have been resurrected by my creation. They are new in my, my world, in my activity. Watch and you'll see it happening. And I thought, wow, that's a wow. And then I was sitting, I was, went, went to eat with Brother Jimmy Phillips, and I received a call from Virginia Allen from Boy City, and she says, I've never had a prophecy in my whole life. But she said, God gave me a prophecy. And I said, what was it? She says, I just see that we are a reflection of who Jesus is here on this earth. A reflection is like looking into that mirror, into a water that's bubbling away through the wrinkles of the water. And you see yourself or you see something in that. That is who we are here on this earth. She was so excited that she saw this. She, was, she had never had any, the Spirit of God ever give her anything. She said, I don't know anything about anything. But the Lord, she said, I just had to call you and tell you we, what we are. And that when we sow into these things, we... <laughs> When we saw into these things, the presence of God just gets there. Where it is, it is, it's heavy. You know, Peter got after the Apostle Paul. He says his letters are so weighty and they're so heavy. You know why? Because the presence of the Spirit of God was on Paul more than Peter. Now, Peter was a man of God, but nothing. His shadow, could, he could just walk by and his shadow would just heal people. But Paul was more... He was, he says, to know him and the power of his resurrection that I might just walk in that. We have to yield to the living spirit to allow him to take over the thinking, the mind. We have the mind of Christ, but you only have that by the spirit. You only have Jesus' mind by the spirit. Now some of you have been standing on the outer court and you've been looking into the Holy of Holies and he says, I want it. But I don't know how to get there. Well, I'm telling you, just climb up and come on in. Amen. Just come on in. It's for everybody. Get in the water in Ezekiel. It says come out to where you can, the, pass the plumb line. Come on out into the river. What is keeping you from knowing God? Doctrine? Religion? Someone said? What you thought? What you didn't think? What is keeping you from walking and entering into what he's saying in the Word? How do you expect the Word of God to ever be live in your heart if you don't allow the Spirit of God to inspire you and aspire you to greater heights in walking with Him? How do you ever expect the Word of God to open up to you if you don't allow the Spirit of God to teach you? Because it says in John 14, 16, it says, in, in 15 and 16, it says, the Spirit of God will teach you all truth about who? About Jesus and the power of His resurrection. Every part of that comes from knowing who He is. Well, if you realize that you're in Him, well, you say, I'm, I've never made the decision to know Jesus as Lord. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do that. Lord Jesus, forgive me. I know that you were beaten. You were crucified. Hung on that cross three days. You went into the bowels of the earth. And you led captivity captive. And you brought me right out of there with everyone else. And I have been resurrected in that newness of life. I've been baptized in the likeness of your death. And I've been raised to walk in the newness of life. I'm no longer an old sinner saved by grace. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am more than a conqueror in Him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. The words of the living God comes out of my heart because I've stored them up in my heart. Faith comes by hearing and I hear the word being spoken out of my mouth in my ear. The Lord is the Lord of glory and I'm part of that glory. Amen and so are you. 
Amen. Now, how do you how do you speak those twenty verses there that quick? Quick only by the Spirit of the Living God. In Psalm one nineteen twenty five, you ought to pray this every day over yourself. And it's many times in Psalm 119. It's the longest book in the Bible, but it's the most wonderful book. If you let it talk to you, it'll say, Quicken thou me, Lord, according to thy word. In other words, Father, make thy word alive in me so that I can walk in the power of your word. I'm going to raise the dead. I'm going to see the blind see. The, the deaf are going to hear. The lame are going to walk. And the good news is going to be preached. And Jesus is coming soon. You better get your suitcase ready. Amen. But he's not coming till the great awakening happens, and we got to get into that first. Don't cop out and say, Lord, come quick, we're in such a bad mess. No, Lord, keep me here so I can witness to one more person just for the kingdom. And you might be doing it over an ice cream cone or making an ice cream cone. Okay? And you might be witnessing to someone through how, who knows. Satan will always, always try to distract you by the thoughts in, it, in your mind. What's happening in your mind? He will use something to distract you. He will use anything to distract you. He will use a barking dog, a noisome neighbor, or two people arguing. He will use those things to distract you. He will use something you learned way back there or somebody said to distract you. Well, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you. And you, people go back and say, Paul had bad eyes. Give me a break. Paul wrote 66% of the New Testament. He knew how to walk in the power of Jesus' name. He saw people raised from the dead. He did all those things. He preached the gospel and he wrote it down by the inspiration of the Spirit of God so that you and I could walk in it too. And he was not sick. And he was not blind. And he said, I saw revelations that are so wonderful that I cannot even put words to them. But if you, if you allow the Spirit of God to show you, He will show you what Paul saw and it did see. And it's in the book. You can see it by the inspiration of the Spirit. You don't have to read something in there. Well, thus saith the Lord. It's in there and it will come out and it will show you. The Word is the Word and it will lead you into all truth. Now, if you're, if you're sick and you're afflicted, say, Father, forgive me. I'm healed now by the stripes of Jesus. Satan has nothing in you. He can't keep you from being healed. And you don't believe the evil report. The evil report says you're going to die. We're all going to die. But the point is we're going to name the day. We're going to live a long life, the Bible says. I will satisfy you with long life. No deadly pestilence come near your dwelling place. The enemy's bound. He can't come. But if you, if you pussyfoot around and wallow around in your self-pity and listen to the evil report, you're going to say, well, I'm not going to make it. I better take another round of chemo. Well, take five more rounds. See what that does for you. We took a lot and it didn't do any good. But the Lord's going to give me understanding of what's going on around me because I'm telling you, I'm hungry for it and I'm going to know it. He said, I will not keep anything from you. The secret things of mine are yours, so ask me and I'll give it to you. I want the revelation so I can tell y'all so y'all can walk in it too. I, and I'm not the only one. Maybe the Lord's going to give it to you. And you're going to, then you're going to tell me. But the Lord will give it to us. He doesn't withhold his hand from us. His grace and mercy are always there. Every day. Every minute. This morning I was out here and I picked this music stand up. That bottom one right there will squeeze your finger till it hurts. And I, I started to say, oh, it hurts. And I said, no, thank you, Jesus, I'm healed. I mean, I thought the thing was falling off by a little pinky, you know. But you've got to take authority when the, when the problem arises. You can't wait on the next day. You've got to do it then. So it's got to be in you to come out of you. If you're looking for something to come in, you've got to put it in so it'll come out. What's going to come out of you is what's bubbling up inside of you. The Holy Spirit is bubbling up inside of me. Can you sense His presence? I've been begging Him, asking Him, pleading with Him to let it overflow. I love Acts chapter 4. You know, they've been in jail and they got out of jail and they were having a big old awakening and they were all praying and everything. And they prayed and the building they were in was shook, shaking. I said, Lord, let it happen where we are. Let them fall out on the floor with laughter. I don't care. Let them come with new tongues. I don't care. Let Your spirit can do whatever he wants. We don't have elders and deacons and the board to tell us what to do here. We're under the auspices of the Lord Jesus, so whatever he wants to do, he can do it. I welcome his presence. And I hope you do too. Holy Spirit, come. Touch every heart. Touch every life. Let your presence be here, Holy Spirit. We want you. We desire you. We are in your dispensation to teach us the ways of the Lord. I want it. I desire it. And it's going to happen. If I have anything to say about it, we're going to do it. 
But if I don't have anything to say about it, he's still going to do it. Because he says, I will do what I want to do when I want to do it because I am the Father. And my ways are a little bit higher than your way. Get up out of the dirt and come on. You're seated in heavenly places with me. Come on. What are you waiting on? Come on. Why are you waiting for the roundup to start? We're already in it. Come on. Get your boots on. Get your shappies on. Get your spurs on. Get your horse ready. Come on. What does it take for you to saddle up? Well, we're waiting for another cup of coffee. Well, help your blessed assurance to stay right there because you're going to miss the roundup. The roundup is going on now. It has been and it is. And it's going to continue until God completes the task when Jesus says, time is up. Time is up. It's done. And we're going to know it because the Spirit of God will quicken our spirit. I pray that this sermon has ignited your spirit. I pray that this sermon has lit your candle. I pray that your wick is not wet. I pray that you're on fire. There's something burning in your gut, burning down inside of you that you have no earthly idea what the Lord's doing, but you're so hungry for whatever it is, you've got to have it. It's like desiring something, but you don't know what you're desiring. You want it, but you don't know what it is. You've got to have it, but you don't know. Gotta... I told a black brother this morning, I said, you guys have got more, more activity in your body than us white guys. I said, we don't even know how to do anything right, with our body. But you guys don't. Then he said, yeah, it's the Holy Ghost. I said, you got it right. Amen. And we need to release that in us. We need to be stiff-necked, stiff drawered, whatever. Excuse my country talking, but sometimes you just need to be plain spoken that people understand it's time to get up, stand up, and do the stuff. What is the stuff? Jesus is Lord. The Spirit of God wants to fill your vessel. Now, why are you living in the quagmire you're in? Get up and come on. Stop it. Stop being foolish. Stop being silly. Amen? Amen. All right. What else we want to talk about? Or is any among you sick and afflicted? The Bible says call upon the elders of the church. Hey folks, that's us. Amen. We can lay hands on the sick. The Bible says the Lord will raise them up. We anoint them with oil. The Lord says he'll, he'll raise them up. It's not up to you and me. Our job is to pray and believe God. It's his to do the healing. He will do it because the spirit of the living God resides in us and will cause our bodies to be quickened and the healing comes. It's there and it'll manifest. And it does and it did and it will. And there's nothing can stop it. Satan can't stop it. Your dumb thoughts can't stop it because God's word's God's word and it's going to happen. And you may think, well, why didn't that person get healed? Well, that's the ultimate healing. I'm telling you right straight up. My wife died. She had cancer in her body. That was not the ultimate healing. The ultimate healing is when she got full of the Holy Ghost back over there several days before that and was praising God when she was so sick. That's the healing. The body had the cancer in it. We burned the body. We scattered the ashes. She's in heaven with a new body. Get it in your mind. It's not an ultimate healing. You don't drag this body to heaven. This body doesn't take cancer to heaven. <sniffs> On so much religion there. Excuse my country, but that's all that is. You got a new body. She's got a wonderful... I'll tell you what, she's a gorgeous cow. I got her picture right there if you don't believe me. She was a good looking mama. And she was my sweetie babe. But I'm telling you, she's not dead. She's alive. And she lives forevermore. Old Walter and them, they're going to do on this TV, they put in remembrance of Bobby Lee. And I thought, wow, that was a neat thing somebody put on there. you got to have your saddle shipped to heaven before you get there, if you want to ride. You can't wait. You can't wait to ship your saddle home. It's got to be ready now. Because you don't know the last moment of your breath. You don't know when it's going to be your time to check out. And the bills are paid. i got news for you. Father, I just pray for all the folks that have heard this message. And I think that you are so alive by your Spirit in our heart. You're so alive that we're going to go. We're going to do your mighty work. We're going to do your stuff, Father. And your son is going to be lifted up because the word says if Jesus be lifted up, he will draw all. Thank God for your blood, Jesus. Thank God for the mercy. Thank God for the empty tomb. Thank God for the Holy Ghost who lives in us. Thank God for the offerings. Thank God for the TV, the radio programs, anything, the CDs that Ed makes. Whatever we do, Father, for your glory, that the people will be inspired and wanting to know you more intimately. Father, I pray that this will just bless every person. 
Thank you, Lord, for showing up this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for listening to the messages. And we, we just praise the Lord that you have believed and received. You know, the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 8, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord and repents of their sins, that he is just and merciful to forgive you, that Jesus was beaten, he hung on the cross, he was buried, and on the third day he came out of that tomb, and he gave mankind re redemption and right re re restoration back to the Father. We thank him right now that he's blessed you and restored you. I pray that you prayed that, that prayer of faith. If you did, call us on that number there on the bottom of the screen, or email us, or write us, whatever you'd like. We will, we will be glad to hear from you. May, your, may you send your tithes and offerings to help us get, get this message out throughout the world. We hope you're having a blessed and a prosperous day. In Jesus Christ, amen.